On the 4th February in the year 2000, Will Wright's The Sims was released in Other World. Within two years, it had sold more than 6.3 million copies worldwide and had become the best selling game in history. Then, on the 14th of September 2004, its sequel, The Sims 2, followed. This edition was revolutionary. It changed the 2D landscape that we'd seen in The Sims 1 to a 3D landscape. It had seven life stages, added aging, personalities, days of the week, just to name a few. This game added to the current lore of the original game as well, setting it 25 years or so in the future and added a fundamental storyline which was Belagoth's disappearance. Five years later on the 2nd of June 2009 The Sims 3 was released. This once again revolutionized the franchise changing a closed world to an open world with story progression where the world was literally alive as you played. This law was once again built upon set in the game 25 years before this original Sims game. And then on May 6, 2013, The Sims 4 was announced. On September 2nd, 2014, it was released. And that time in between these dates is what we're going to be focusing on today in today's video. Despite the fourth game being extremely successful, it was met with critical reviews from both fans and the media. I would have thought it. Hmm, not me. Well, me. Me. Before we dive into it as well, I do want to say that The Sims 4 did introduce some revolutionary things and I don't want to overlook them despite there being absolutely no create style none to be seen actually build and buy mode were extremely user friendly on release sims have emotions which you know with the addition of more packs has become more of a nuisance than a benefit as all sims experience emotions there's less to define each sim and sims can now multitask which has probably been the biggest advantage of the sims 4 so far but there is definite improvements i'm not saying that there isn't but today we aren't necessarily focusing on that we are focusing more on the initial upset towards the game and the things that weren't included so it might seem like i'm not mentioning the positive parts and that is for a reason because today we're not focusing on the positive parts all right just so we know so if you think well why wasn't this included it's because it's not meant to be included Sims 4 began life under the working title of Olympus, which was an online multiplayer game. This is quite well known within the Sims community, or at least I think it is. But in case you didn't know, The Sims 4 was originally meant to be an online multiplayer game, which I think is why a lot of the items originally are lower quality. There's also speculation on whether it was supposed to be a mobile game. EA had lots of plans during this time for expansion of online features and online games, but after a very negative public response and technical issues with SimCity, the multiplayer aspect was scrapped if anyone else can remember the only multiplayer version of SimCity it basically destroyed the franchise City Skylines took over. Taking into account that The Sims 4 had to switch from an online multiplayer game Olympus to a solo player game as Sims games inherently should be. As well as this, Wikipedia states that EA Salt Lake, which housed Max's staff developing The Sims 4, suffered major layoffs during a restructure in January 2014. IGN indicated that all Max's staff had either been laid off or migrated to Redwood Shaw Studio. EA Salt Lake would eventually be shut down in 2017. It's been suggested that these development issues, in particular the switch from the multiplayer to single player format for the reason a number of features were missing from the game at launch. So the missing features if you've joined at the sims world recently absolutely no shade babe get into my favorite game whenever you want to get in which you know what i mean i'm not going to stop anyone wanting to play if you weren't there at launch though there was a significant lack of features being missed and i'm going to talk about the online response to that it was announced that the sims 4 would not contain several features that the previous games had included at some point potentially one of the most contentious and lasting absences was that of an open world we'd went from a closed world in the sims 2 to an open world in the sims Sims 3, which meant that the world was alive around you and you could travel anywhere without a loading screen. While most missing features have been added at a later date, which we'll get to in a little bit, The Sims 4 remains a closed world and even closed neighborhood system with loading screens between every single lot. This is a sharp contrast to The Sims 3 where you could knock on a neighbor's door and just enter their house. In The Sims 4, even though the house is fully loaded and rendered, you still have to sit through a loading screen to get there. So obviously, you know, we went from that type of world in The Sims 2 to suddenly being able to go everywhere without a loading screen in sims 3 there was a mixed response in the community most were in favor of open worlds but also some refused to play the new edition completely because of the lack of open worlds ian bennett from the sims forum said maybe one of the reasons why they didn't create the sims 4 in an open world is because they wanted the game to be supported by more people's operating systems yeah open world does create more realism but i along with other people i've talked to weren't able to travel out into the open world because it made our games crash 
slash lag. It took forever to load lots because everything had to load around it. I do miss open worlds to an extent, but I would rather have a game that functions correctly. Charlie Girl said, wow, some truly interesting points of view there in my opinion, open world was something really groundbreaking in the Sims saga. It was a sell on point, highly anticipated feature of the Sims 3, and sometimes I miss it, but I got used to this closed open world of the Sims 4 and it finally grew on me. Of course, I'd like to have more freedom without loading screens, at least in the neighborhoods when visiting houses, but this is the way things are now. Like some people said, both options, open slash closed, have their pros and cons after all. Nikki Bitsward said, I love open world, I haven't had many problems with it, but I have a gaming rig built specifically for the Sims series, which are pretty much the only PC games I play. I can't get used to non-open world and loading screens. You can call it semi-open, but for me, when I played The Sims 4, there was something fake about the so-called world. With the backdrops in the same town he's going past all the time, like the Truman Show movie. That is a very good comparison of what The Sims 4 feels like, actually. Cactus Juice also said, I loved open world concept and it mission has completely destroyed any hopes for me continuing with The Sims 4. It should have been included, not the buggy Sims 3 open world as something we want, but a completely overhauled open world, even better in performance and depth than The Sims 3. This is a very important point and I do want to build upon this. I kind of look at open world through rose tinted glasses, but also the open world of The Sims 3 did cause a lot of issues, especially when you take into account that a lot of people who play The Sims, not saying everybody, but you know, a lot of people who play The Sims are more casual gamers because the audience for The Sims and Animal Crossing overlap quite a bit and they're the same kind of casual games. And especially considering that The Sims 3, even on my current high-end computer, The Sims 3 does not run very well. And The Sims 3 also comes with a warning that says, do not play with all expansion packs, your game will fucking die. Doesn't exactly say those words, but it may as well, like that's the kind of energy it gives off. Open world was popular and unpopular because it also limited the playability for a lot of people in The Sims 3, but as stated with all of these opinions as well, a lot of people don't think that a closed world was completely the way to go. My opinion now after playing with both games for so long over the years is that a semi-open world is best, which will still give you that realism, but won't fully close the world off to you because, you know, having to sit through a loading screen to go to your next door neighbours is a bit much. It is actually. <laughs> so open world was a little bit more people were like I kind of understand I don't understand it was a little bit more divided so some people were happy about it some people weren't but not only did the game not feature an open world at all the maps for the base game worlds were flat and also didn't feel like worlds at all so the current map that we're used to looking at at the minute is this type of map but the map that originally came with the base game was a totally colorless lifeless soulless version which was a complete change from previous games in fact this was this took us way back to the sims 1 the sims 1 had a flat 2d map but that at least had color and then as we moved on in the sims 2 as the world became 3d as it still is in the sims 4 the sims 4 is 3d in the sims 2 you could move around the map and you could kind of get a sense that this was an actual world same with the sims 3 even more so because it was an open world you could travel around at any time but because the sims 4 is basically a set like the truman show then the maps aren't 3d and that also ruins the realism and then another hit <laughs> another one <sighs> at the sims camp prior to the release an interview was conducted with jill johnson creator sim producer and it was revealed during this interview that the sims 4 would not feature the creator style system from previous titles now jill is absolutely lovely i fucking love jill i would just like to say that like jill you have my heart babe some players are not happy about the fact that we don't have create style in game anymore what would you like to tell them and jill's response was at the moment we are not planning to create style in game and we don't know this feature will be added later on we are focusing on making the base game great stable and powerful we want the sims 4 to ship with a very high level of quality and we decided to focus on certain areas which honestly i think is quite fair you know if you're asking something because you want the game to be stable and fully complete and like feel like a rich game if you have to sacrifice create style to do that then that is fair but that's not what happened i had a very hard time believing this was true because not only was create style axed we also had a very limited color range of hair a very very limited skin tone color range because prior to the skin tone update we had another update that added more skin tones because the diversity and representation was just not there it was more necessary in my opinion to have create style in create sim rather than have create style in build and buy mode because taking away those options for people to represent themselves in create sim is not a good move it's it's not and there was absolutely not enough representation options in the initial base game of the sims 4 and again i would have agreed with jill's opinion if the sims 4 was good on release but I i'm sorry to this man it wasn't he would walk down the street now i wouldn't know a thing so 
So the list of missing features Steve McGraw has released it at The Sims 4 grew nearer and the developers revealed on Twitter that story progression, another well-loved feature of previous games, would not work the same way. Story progression had become a thing that was known and loved in The Sims 3. The world was alive around you very much so in the sense that it was an open world, but also people moved on with their lives in The Sims 3. Like, you were not the benevolent overlord that you think you are in The Sims 3. Because if you went there to control someone, they'd have a kid anyway. They're like, fuck you, we don't need your permission. And they'd go get married, have kids, love that for him, honestly, get jobs and everything. It wasn't that fine-tuned. The story progression mod in The Sims 3 was much better at, like, getting this story progression. But there was still story progression in the sims 3 where the sims 4 i laugh because you gotta laugh or you'll fucking cry babe i think i probably potentially did actually diego to memphis said at sim guru sarah quick question does sims 4 have story progression like the sims 3 sim guru sarah said yes and no there is auto waging that you can turn on and off oh bother if npc sims die new sims move in but it doesn't work exactly like the sims 3 And Crin said, "At Sim Guru Graham, do we really have to micromanage our towns now? No, or not? Uh, what the fuck? No, or or born babies in an active families? And Graham, again, I love you. Feel really bad saying you my name, but I've got to. This is my job." <laughs> and Graham said, "If you want unplayed families to continue beyond their current generation, you'll need to try for a baby with them or play as them." Which was a fact of The Sims 2 that I fucking hated. Actually, The Sims 2 base game, outstanding for its time, I will say that. But going back, it's definitely very hard to sit and play without story progression and I very much feel that in The Sims 4 as well. Players would also soon come find out that poddlers would be missing from the game as well. They were introduced in The Sims 2, built upon in The Sims 3, and just remarkably forgotten in The Sims 4. And it seems that rather than making improvements, The Sims 4 took a leaf straight out of The Sims 1's book and just had babies automatically turn into children. And for a game that is supposed to represent life, acts on a life stage that has been featured in the game for over 10 years was bound to cause upset. It completely breaks the suspension and disbelief. And uh, it made me personally feel quite robbed. Why would I spend money on this game? It's not even complete. Toddlers weren't the only victims either. I've mentioned some of these, but you know, this isn't an exhaustive list, but police officers, firemen, the repo man, the exterminator, the burglar, many loved NPCs would not make their return to the franchise and some of them still haven't. New players of the game won't ever know that deep feeling of dread <laughs> when you play in the game and you get the burglar notification sound and you've just got to watch as the artful dodger comes into your house and steals your family's prized possessions. You have never lived. The Sims 4 is also on an alternate time line the fuck's that about bella goth's not missing don lothario's walking free where is the law not below the features missing at release as well that players felt should be in the initial base game included basements and ghosts what is going to be in the goth's garden if not ghosts And all of this led to fans of the series to start petition to have those features added onto the game, even if it meant pushing back the release date. By July 2014, the petition had over 11,000 signatures and counting. The petition on change.org as well, it's still up there. Include toddlers and pools in the Sims 4 base game. Toddlers have been a vital aspect to the Sims series because it is a life state that is crucial to the flow of the game. Without it, newborns will age up straight into children, which will impair the possibility for storytelling, a huge thing for the Sims community. We also want pools. Pools have been in every single base game and none of them would be ridiculous at this point. Fully, fully, fully agree with you, babe. This petition was also mentioned by the media as well. Like, this wasn't just a, you know, a couple of Sims disappointed. This was picked up by the media. PC Invasion in 2014 post an article, The Sims 4 Pools and Toddlers petition gathers pace. Came to surprise a few days ago that Maxis will not be adding toddlers or swimming pools to The Sims 4 and fans were not happy. In the recent post from the development team highlighting game features as a follow-up to E3, it was revealed that toddlers and swimming pools will not make the cut when the game's released. And Sims fans were appalled at the news. Surely toddlers play an important part in what is essentially a life simulator? The decision by Maxis sparked heated discussion within the community and eventually a petition was started to get both features included for the release. Also importantly in this article, while petitions usually have little impact on development decisions, perhaps Maxis will learn from their SimCity mistakes and actually listen to what their community wants and expects to see in The Sims 4. I wouldn't be surprised if removed features such as swimming pools are added eventually as paid DLC. Thankfully they weren't. It's important to note that around this time, it's still very much present in everyone's mind that SimCity was a catastrophic failure because it seems like there was absolutely no cohesivity 
differentiate between what players wanted and what was actually released and this did end up flattening an entire game the sim city was a failure and this idea that content was being stripped just to be sold later on was it was a shared sentiment wikipedia which i class as a fucking valid resource site right because it is actually all sourced and looked over this part of wikipedia talks about the things that were caught basements grocery stores school work locations and it says these announcements sparked criticism among many fans who speculated that the exclusion of arguably core features were intended by the developers or parent company to be left out for later paid content or in order to make rush deadlines. People are kind of frightened, not going to lie. And then The Sims 4 released, and I've already made Simmers' opinions clear on the game, but it's not just Simmers who were upset at the cut aspects of the games. The Sims 4 also quite upset the media. GameSpot review said, in short, The Sims 4 biggest problem is that The Sims 3 exists, and describing where it stumbles by necessity means looking at where the series has begun. This is a lovely and lively game that elicits constant smirks, but Sims 4 moments never feel like part of a bigger picture. Spontaneity is limited in turn, which brings me back to that gargantuan telescope now sitting in front of the library. Gazing at the stars means enduring a loading screen and while I appreciate the top level commands that I can issue with family members playing another lot, simultaneously spending time with other sims means enduring even more loading screens or forcing my family to travel together. I love looking at and listening at the sims 4 but those digital people aren't so enchanting as to keep me hooked. Not when a decked out version of The Sims 3 is far more inviting. And that first sentence sums up a lot of people's opinions when The Sims 4 first came out. In short, The Sims 4 biggest problem is that The Sims 3 exists. Because it's hard to go from a game that is so fleshed out, even in base game, to a game where all those things have been stripped back and not that much has been gained. IGN review also said that transitioning from The Sims 3 to The Sims 4 is a little rough. Sims 4 seems barren of content and features by comparison, especially with regard to the severely limited scope of the world and frequent but much shorter loading screens a noticeable absence of toddlers pools and cars it's not so much that maxis didn't recreate all the same features but rather that there aren't enough cool new things to replace what's missing so i know that as the simming community we can be a little bit you know unhinged feral there's plenty of words to describe us but a lot of opinions were also shared by the media but you know critic reviews have been generally more positive than fan reviews and i've picked parts from critic reviews that have reflected my narrative because i am biased but there was also part of these critical reviews that did speak well of them and the game was generally rated like four out of five six out of ten seven out of ten yeah they do generally speak well of the game but that doesn't mean that they're always accurate and there's also an image of critic reviews versus user reviews where uh, critic reviews had two negative reviews user reviews had 537 critic reviews tended to view the game as average like mixed reviews good and bad user reviews was overwhelmingly negative just reviewing a pack or just reviewing a game doesn't necessarily give you an entire overview that's why i've also sat to delve into actually playing expansion packs as well on my channel and critic reviews aren't always accurate you know just because it's like official doesn't mean it's more accurate and for that i'd like to quote apart from euro gamers review the sims 4 is both fresh and yet also predictable pleasant comfortable and rarely overstimulating it's wobbly and you can still see some of its joints or hear the creaks as new parts settle into place it's not likely to win over any new players but it will satisfy a lot of its old ones for many of its fans it will feel like moving into a new home they'll settle That's some bullshit. From what we've seen, long-term fans of the franchise, myself included, and I would also like to take this moment to mention Lazy Game Reviews. Never spoke to him, actually. Probably doesn't even know I exist, but I do relate to him a lot because we've both been through the franchise since the initial release and saw the initial spark and excitement and the charm of the original games and saw that slowly dwindle away. We have both been constantly disappointed by the fourth version of the game because we've seen firsthand what came before it. However, I've, I tended to see that new fans of the franchise who haven't really experienced the previous previous games in context of the time they were released have been won over more easily by The Sims 4 because it's easy to look at The Sims 4 now through the eyes of 2021 and compare the technology we have now the technology that we had in like 2004 when The Sims 2 was out. Hello Ari, I'm in pyjamas don't mind me but a, a great analogy that I have for this is Animal Crossing New Horizons because that's the first game that I've played of it. For me I absolutely love Animal Crossing and I don't really have anything to reference to prior to that and I picked up New Leaf and I was trying to play it and I haven't quite got it yet like like I haven't quite understood the charm of it yet and I find that that's quite similar to what players who've only ever played The Sims 4 feel about previous Sims games because you just haven't grown up with the spark of it whereas if I had started Animal Crossing on New Leaf or a game previous to that 
I'd have probably understood the spark a lot more and why New Horizons is so lacking, if that makes any sense. This was the initial release and I am very happy to say that Maxis actually did surprise players, you know, the earlier worries that things would be axed just to be sold at a later date was false. Ghosts and pools came for free, basements came for free, toddlers came for free. This video isn't to say that The Sims 4 has remained consistently unpopular and over the years we have seen the base game built upon massively with basements, ghosts, pools, family trees being added back, firemen, toddlers were introduced and toddlers in my opinion in The Sims 4 are the best toddlers that we We've seen so far in the franchise but that doesn't mean that their addition still feels a little bit backhanded especially since the game wasn't built to handle toddlers so the entire world that he's surrounded in doesn't really have anything for him and there's also been updates that have greatly added to the game as well and set it above its predecessors lifestyles the ability to play with gender i'm still waiting for that non-binary near gender upset though babe because i i would like some representation and the configurable stairs <laughs> It's called being versatile. It, it's an absolutely groundbreaking update. And honestly, I didn't think that I'd say this in 2014, but now looking at The Sims 4 through the lens of 2021, I actually think that The Sims 4 has a positive future, even with a flawed base game. I think that there's definitely been, well, I hope that there's been lessons learned. Some people like, they supposedly hate you, but they know everything about you. <sighs> Girl, you've been out here anyway how you doing <laughs> this isn't just a shit on the sims 4 because there has been some really really good updates and i'm glad that you know toddlers weren't juiced better than ever even with all of those additions when you look back at the initial release of the sims 4 with everything missing i can say for certain in my opinion that the game should have been pushed back and i'm serious about this opinion because the sims 2 was actually pushed back actually so i know that it can be done and i know this because i was at school primary school at the initial time of the sims 2 was released and i pulled a sickie but i was actually ill i did have a stomach ache but i think that was pure sheer fucking excitement and i got to go home to play the sims 2 but then my mom was like sorry bab couldn't get it it was pushed back even though there was tears and genuine heartbreak at the time i'm glad that the sims 2 was pushed back because even without the expansions and updates sims 2 base game was a solid game on release but I think that The Sims 4 definitely should have done the same, especially with the context given of Sim City and that failure. The Sims 4 should have definitely been pushed back. Yes, that is my entire video on the shocking release of The Sims 4 and how it went down like a lead balloon. There was definitely lots missing. And again, I've said earlier, but I didn't think that I'd be sat here in 2021 looking at The Sims 4, playing it and thinking, I genuinely enjoy you as a game. I didn't start playing The Sims 4 until 2017 because I just couldn't. I think when Toddlers came back, I was like, right, I'll dive in. But before then, I couldn't play it. I just played The Sims 3 all the time. It's not to hate on The Sims 4. I think that The Sims 4 has had some great updates and I do genuinely enjoy the game it's just looking at what was before all the good things got added and in the future if and when the sims 5 comes out which it is looking likely but the sims 4 is also unique in that it hasn't followed this like four to five year timeline of a new game being introduced which also just make me a little bit nervous because i think that because the sims 4 the base game is inherently flawed it makes me nervous that it's still going to be years but also i am enjoying the game but also i'm ready for a new one because it's been five years i'm excited to see what the team will do i think that if we look at what's been added to the game recently and like i think that great things have been added recently then i'm excited for the sims 5 if it follows the line of the sims 4's initial release not excited for the sims 5 but i can say hand on heart as much as i have been disappointed by the sims 4 base game and its initial release i do genuinely like where the sims 4 is currently going barring kits can we please have a fucking expansion pack or game pack jesus christ your honor it's heading in a good way and it's heading in a way i didn't necessarily see it going in fact i was very very nervous that it'd be the end of the franchise especially after sim city so that is everything that i have for you today thank you all so so much for watching this video i love you all so so much please subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye bitch